summer threats all week long. We're preparing you for the weather events that strike this time of year. Tonight we're taking you to Cape Cod so you can see firsthand how a key tool in weather data collection works. And it's a weather balloon and it has a simple design, but it provides crucial information that helps formulate forecasts. Meteorologist Pete Mangione joins us now from Chatham. Once this weather balloon is launched, it will travel thousands of feet into the atmosphere, capturing critical weather data for meteorologists and the general public. Three, two, one. Lift off. It's a quick journey up into the sky for this weather balloon, which is launched twice a day from Monomoy National Wildlife Refuge in Chatham, Massachusetts. On the trip up, it will take readings in the upper atmosphere, which are crucial for weather forecasts, especially during severe weather. It's measuring directly temperature, calculating the uh, dew point temperature, and also pressure. Alan Dunham from the National Weather Service Taunton office says there are launch sites like this all over the world, including Brookhaven, New York, and Long Island, Albany, New York, and Gray, Maine. But this spot in Chatham has a special distinction. This is the furthest east upper air site in the continental United States. Let's take you back to the beginning of the process. Lead upper air weather observer Tim Morissette has been launching balloons at this site for 10 years. First, he inflates the balloon with helium. Then he walks to a trailer next door. Once the balloon is already inflated, there is still a lot of preparation to do, as you can see behind me, including preparing the weather instrumentation and setting up the software. This is what's called a radio sonde. It's the actual device that will be observing and recording the weather data, which is then transmitted back to an antenna on the ground. Uh, temp sensor, heavy humidity sensor here. It also has a pressure sensor inside and a GPS unit, which is used to calculate wind speed and direction. Back in the garage, Morissette sets up a parachute and rope to attach to the radio sonde. So on the way up, this will unwind all the way to 120 feet or so. The balloon can exceed elevations over 100,000 feet. Eventually it bursts and usually ends up landing in the ocean. But occasionally the parachute will drop it back on land. That was the case several years ago from a balloon launched in Albany. We got a call once time from a very concerned lady that there was this package in a tree with a parachute and she was convinced it was a bomb. The computer models that the pinpoint weather team uses depend on the data from these balloons. The launches have to be done correctly and consistently or else the forecast accuracy can lose altitude. There's an old saying with computers, garbage in, garbage out, Geico. Right. Same thing with a weather forecast model. If you have lousy information going into the model, you're going to get a lousy forecast out of it. And if you are interested in looking at the data from the balloon launches like the one you just saw, we've linked that information to our website at WPRI.com. I'm meteorologist Pete Mangione, Eyewitness News.